It's Wednesday, February 6th. Two days after a clash between Kolkata police and the Central Bureau of Investigation, the Supreme Court has intervened and allowed both sides to claim moral victory. The Supreme Court on Tuesday ordered the CBI not to take coercive action against Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar. A 40-member CBI team had gone to Kumar's house on Sunday to question him in connection with the Sarda Chit Fund scam, setting off events that led to the federal and political crisis. After the Supreme Court verdict, Banerjee said that the court's order preventing the CBI from arresting Kumar was a moral victory. Banerjee ended the protest after nearly 48 hours at the site, promising to carry on her fight against the centre. The court also instructed Kumar to cooperate with the CBI officials who are investigating the chit fund scams and asked him to appear before them at a neutral venue in Shillong. Moreover, the court issued notice to the West Bengal government, Rajiv Kumar, and the state's Director General of Police on a contempt plea by the CBI, asking them to reply by February 18th. Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said this was a moral victory for the CBI and asked why Mamata Banerjee was standing in the way of investigation. The case will now come up on February 20th in the Supreme Court with the likelihood that the CBI will meet Kumar in the interim. It seems the entire effort of the Ministry of Home Affairs is to destroy the NRC process, said the Supreme Court bench of CGI Gogoi and Justice RF Nariman. The Supreme Court came down heavily on the Modi government for seeking permission to redeploy 167 companies of armed police forces overseeing the NRC process for election duties. Refusing strongly, the bench said, NRC work requires only 167 companies of forces out of the 3,000 combined armed police force companies. You need 2,700 companies for the Lok Sabha polls. So what is the problem? Is it too much to ask that the Lok Sabha polls and NRC work should go on simultaneously and peacefully? Live Law reported. The Supreme Court slammed the Attorney General's argument that NRC work during elections may be difficult from a law and order perspective. The bench made it clear that the Supreme Court would not extend the July 31st deadline for the process of completion of National Register of Citizens for Assam. A Morgan Stanley report delivered some surprising news this week. Walmart may consider exiting India. This comes just a year after Walmart spent $16 billion to acquire Indian e-commerce brand Flipkart, the biggest e-commerce deal ever. How could things have changed so quickly? The answer lies in new rules that were announced by the Indian government in December, which seek to protect domestic players. India's e-commerce regulations have two important principles. It allows 100% foreign direct investment in marketplaces like Amazon and Flipkart, which connect buyers and sellers. But it doesn't allow those foreign-funded marketplaces to own all their inventory. This means that companies like Amazon or Flipkart cannot own a bulk of the products that are being sold on their platforms. The idea was to prevent big companies with foreign funding from using their cash to buy in huge quantities, allowing them to offer discounts that domestic retailers cannot afford. But it didn't exactly work. In the past, this just meant that owners of marketplaces set up other companies to sell their own goods, like Amazon's cloud tail Retail or Flipkart's WS Retail. But the new rules issued in December try to close the doors on these loopholes. Inventory of a vendor will be deemed to be controlled by e-commerce marketplace entity if more than 25% purchases of such vendor are from the marketplace entity or its group companies. In other words, even group companies connected to Flipkart or Amazon cannot sell all their products on these websites. The rules also prevent these marketplaces from offering deep discounts or exclusives. With the rules taking effect on February 1st, both Amazon and Flipkart have pulled down thousands of product. One report said that sales had fallen by as much as a third in the first few days of February. And now Morgan Stanley has said that for Walmart, an exit is likely, not completely out of the question, with the Indian e-commerce market becoming more complicated. There are two more aspects to this story. Some believe that the new rules have been pushed as a sop to small traders ahead of elections and might be relaxed afterwards. 
Since the new rules only apply to foreign-funded companies, Indian-funded firms like Reliance will not be subject to the same rules about inventory. And since there are no bars on discounts, an entry into the market is far easier. A whopping two-thirds of the ice in the Himalayan Hindu Kush region could melt by the year 2100. Even if aggressive action to curb greenhouse gases is taken, a new report has found. In what sounds like a doomsday prediction, the report cites that even if the Paris Agreement's central aim to limit the global temperature rise this century to less than 1.5 degrees Celsius is somehow achieved, Warming in the northwest Himalaya and Karakoram region will still likely be at least 0.7 degrees Celsius higher than the global average, something that could lead to flash floods, destruction of ecosystems and other potentially catastrophic consequences. The Hindu Kush Himalaya Assessment Report, published by over 200 authors and over 350 researchers and policy experts working under the Nepal-based International Centre for Integrated Mountain Development, suggests that rising temperatures in India, Pakistan, China and Afghanistan are a serious threat to the region. The Hindu Kush, remember, supplies fresh water to 10 river basins that provide drinking water, irrigation and energy needs to approximately 1.9 billion people or about a quarter of the world's population. The Himalayan glaciers, which were formed some 70 million years ago, have been thinning and retreating at an exponential speed since the 1970s. Satellite data shows that numbers of glacial lakes in the region grew to 4,260 in a decade from 3,350 in 1990. The report further estimates that anywhere between 45 and 91 percent of the glacial cover could be lost in the 80 odd years to the next century. It further identifies that air pollution from the Indo Gangetic Plain, one of the most polluted regions on Earth, causes the deposition of black carbon and dust on the glaciers, hastening melting and changing monsoon circulation. An estimated $4.6 billion per year up until 2030 would be required to make the region sustainable, suggested the report. Love your morning fix? Help support our journalism. Subscribe to Scroll Plus using the link in the description.